Welcome to the first game of 2023, where tonight's match sees the mighty Iron Wolves take on the ferocious Black Hearts. It's sure to be a bone-crunching, no holds barred spectacular as we play Battle Ball. Battle Ball was released in 2003 by Milton Bradley and is a two-player game for ages 8 and up and takes approximately 45 minutes to play. It was designed by Stephen Baker and Craig Van Ness, who were the creators behind such classics as Battle Masters, Hero Quest, Hero Scape, and Space Crusade. So it's American football, but times a hundred, with big mecha suits and robots. And we've got a really beautiful piece of artwork here, which shows off some of the players and some of the destruction that you're going to be experiencing. This is a more intense and deadly version of American football, as can be seen from the hugely exaggerated poses and expressions of our child models here. If you're familiar with Blood Bowl from Games Workshop, then this is Blood Bowl Light. It's fast, it's furious, and it's good fun. Let's take a closer look. We've got two 20-sided dice, two 12-sided dice, two 10-sided dice, two 8-sided dice, four six-sided dice, and a special six-sided football passing die. Each player is going to take the same pool of dice with a d20, a d12, two d6, a d8, and a d10. The football passing die is only used in the advanced game. We've got two team play tokens, one for the Black Hearts and one for the Iron Wolves. We've got two locker room cards, one for each team, and these are double-sided. So we've got one side for the normal game, and on the other side, we've got some additional rules for the advanced version. We've got 24 double-sided carnage tokens, and these represent the destruction which is left behind on the field when a player is tackled and taken off. The game comes with a miniature metal football made from zinc, but unfortunately, as I bought this game secondhand, it was missing the ball, so I had to make my own. Until I managed to track down a proper replacement, this is going to have to do. And we've got 22 playing pieces here, 11 blue players representing our Iron Wolves, and 11 red players representing our Black Hearts. Each team has got a heavy tackle that's going to use two D6s, each team's got a tackle that's going to use 1d6. Each team has got two linebackers that are going to use a d10. Each team has two safeties where each is going to use a d12. Each team have got two linemen where each is going to use a d8. And finally we have our running backs, three for each team and they're going to use a d20 each. And as you can see each player's base matches the colour of the dice that they're going to use so it keeps everything really really nice and simple. These are some really nice miniatures for a commercially produced game. They all come pre-painted. And while the paint standards aren't up to that of the hobbyist, for a factory job, they are pretty nice. The faces have even got washes on them to bring out some of the detail. The plastic has got a little bit of a bend to it, a little bit of give, but it has to be said these are actually really quite firm and are a lot firmer than a lot of miniatures that are produced today. And these heavy tackles are serious big chunks of plastic. They are really, really hefty and I gotta say I really, really like this lot. The board for this game is huge and actually comes in three half folded pieces which have these jigsaw cutouts so that they all slot together to eventually build up to this enormous futuristic playing field. To set up our game our locker cards are going to go to the regulation play side and they're going to be placed next to the board so that each player can easily access them. Each player is going to get their pool of dice. The carnage tokens are going to go within reach of everyone. Our ball is going to go in the centre on the 50 yard line. Our team play tokens and our ball passing die are not going to be used just now because I'm just going to go over the standard rules first of all so they can get placed away at the side. Each team gets their players. And then we're ready to set up our starting lineups. And each team can set up their players in any configuration they like as long as they're behind the 20 yard line. With everybody in their positions, we're ready to begin and players are going to dice off to see who goes first. Black Hearts versus Iron Wolves. Black Hearts is starting. 
So with the black hearts to begin, on your go you declare any player that you want to move and then you roll the die for them. So in this case I'm going to go for my running back which has got a red base so I'm going to roll the red d20. She got a 13 so she's going to move straight for the ball. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. She's going to pick up the ball and then because she's got three more spaces left, she can either stop there or she can move those additional three. She's going to come back to the safety of the team and go round one, two, three, coming back a bit closer here. Play then passes to the opposite team, so the Iron Wolves are going to go, they're going to declare their player, in this case it's going to be our safety in green here, he's got a green base, so he's going to roll a green die. He's got a 3, so he's only going to be able to move 3 spaces. So straight away you can see that our players with the green base are only going to be able to roll our green d12 so they're only going to be able to move a maximum of 12 spaces whereas our red player rolls the red d20 which can move a maximum of 20 spaces. So the red players are going to be able to move a lot faster than in fact any of the other players but they're not as tough, they don't tackle as well. So let's take a closer look at tackling and in this game because it's battle ball there's going to be a lot of tackling happening because you can't just tackle the person who's got the ball you can tackle anybody who's on the field and in fact you can't even move through a space adjacent to an opponent without having to stop to tackle them but in this case we're going to have our safety trying to go for the ball so because he's got a green base he's going to take his green die and roll it He's got an 8, so he can easily move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 spaces adjacent to his opponent to try to get the ball. In order to tackle, our green-based player is going to take his green die, and he's going to roll that against our red-based player, who's going to use their red die. And they're going to try to get the lowest number this time. So green and red gets a 6. So she's actually got the lowest number, so she manages to smash him out of the way and he is going to have to be removed, leaving behind a pile of rubble in the form of a carnage token and the injured player is going to go to his locker room for the remainder of this half of the game. With all the tackling going on in this game and all the carnage being left, you're going to find that your movement starts to get reduced because you can't move through or over a carnage token as well as not being able to move through another player. It is worth noting though that these half squares at the sides of the boards can be moved through and you could use that to evade opponents. If during any tackle a player rolls a 1, then they're going to automatically win and their opponent gets sent off for the whole of the game. They don't get to come back on on the second half. So they're going to go in their locker room on their side. And of course the player who successfully tackled gets the ball. It's worth taking a closer look at our heavy tackle because he operates differently from everybody else. When moving he's going to take 2d6 roll them and then choose which one he wants to use. So in this case if he's going to try and tackle this opponent here instead of the one he's going to choose the five and he's going to move one, two, three like this and then he's going to tackle him. Again it will be one tackling player's roll against the other tackled player's roll. So we've got our 2d6 versus our d20. So again our heavy tackle rolls two and gets to choose which one to use. So in this case, he's going to choose the two, which is pretty much going to crunch him. With a 15, he is going to lose. Our heavy tackle takes him out and the black hearts are down another player. Also worth noting with a heavy tackle is that when he's rolling to move, if he rolls doubles, then his armor malfunctions and he freezes on the spot, not being able to move. Also, because this player is currently in possession of the ball, he fumbles. And that means that the player of the team that is not in possession of the ball gets to take it and place it anywhere within two spaces of this player. So that it can be picked up later. 
Fumbles also happen if two players roll doubles during a tackle, in which case both players are also injured and sent off, or if doubles are rolled during an attempted handoff. Speaking of handoffs, if you end up with a player in possession of the ball who's not very good at moving and you want to pass it to somebody else who is much faster at moving, you can choose that player, roll and move them into position and then attempt a handoff. To do that, you simply take the die for each of those two players and you roll them, trying to make sure that they don't get the same number. With a 7 and a 5, we're okay. And that handoff is successful and passes from one player to the other. That then ends the turn. If those two dice showed the same number, then that would be a fumble and your opponent would place the ball in a space anywhere within two spaces of the person who had the ball. Eventually somebody's going to be able to roll and move so that they cross into their opponent's end zone with the ball and when they do that they score a touchdown, in this case making it 1-0. At that point we stop and go into the second half. First of all, all of the carnage tokens are cleared off the board. The ball goes back to the centre spot. Players go back to the 20 yard lines and get to set up again however they want. And any injured players from the locker rooms come back onto the field to play the second half. Any players who were critically injured by having their opponent roll a 1 during a tackle stay off the pitch in the locker room for the rest of the game however. And then we're ready to go again. The first team to score two touchdowns is the overall winner. If however you want to make things a little bit more complex and more interesting, you can play the advanced rules and that introduces team rules and passing. For advanced team rules we simply flip over our locker cards to show the possible rules for our teams and then out of the three rules on each team card you just choose one of them and you mark it with your little team play token to show that that's the one that you're going to use. Black heart rules mean that a player can effectively move twice or that all three of the running backs can move at the same time or that the heavy tackle can move the sum of his two dice instead of just choosing one of them. For the iron rules it means that the linesmen can win ties instead of being sent off as well as the other player when a tie happens or if they win a tackle they can move up to three spaces back into another tackle position or that the heavy tackle tackles everybody next to him instead of just one person. So the Black Hearts team rules are really good for running and moving and the Iron Wolves team rules are good for tackling. It has to be said though that the Black Hearts rules seem much more powerful than the Iron Wolves rules because they can apply to far more people than these ones. You're getting a lot more movement more often. Advanced play also means that we're able to throw the ball. So on the end of moving a player, they can, if they want to, attempt a pass. They can make a pass to any player as long as that player that they're passing to is within the distance that they're able to move. So in this case, as a black based figure, I would need to pass to another player who is within eight spaces of this one. So if he wants to pass to this much faster running back, the running back is within one, two, three, four, five spaces of him. And with a potential eight, he can do that. So he's going to attempt it. To see if we're successful, we're going to take the receiving player's die and we're going to roll that and we're going to add on the football passing die. And we're going to have to get a combined number which is greater than or equal to the distance between these two players. So rolling this, we've got an 11, which is much more than the distance between these two players. So that successfully gets thrown and caught by our other player. If these two die resulted in the same number showing on them, then that would be a fumble. If these two rolled added up to something less than the five spaces between these two, then it would be an incomplete pass and would end up landing somewhere on the ground. For example, 
with a 3 and a 1 being rolled, 1, 2, 3, 4, the ball would end up over here. Again, it's a fairly simple, straightforward and intuitive rule, but it adds a lot more interest to the game. For a game aimed at children rather than collectors, this looks really good. It's quite rare to find any game which has pre-painted miniatures, especially in this number and detail. This is a fast, fun and intense little game that you're going to really enjoy playing. It's no Blood Bowl, but then Blood Bowl has 64 pages of rules, whereas this has only got about four sides of A4. So it's not going to be as customizable, but it is going to be a lot easier to learn and to remember the rules as you play the game. That said, it could probably do with a bit more customization. There's only two teams that you can play as, and the team rules for those two teams are not really balanced. I do think that Milton Bradley was going to bring out more teams as expansions later on, but that this game just didn't sell well enough for them to make that financially viable. It would be nice though to see more teams and for there to be a couple more rules to elevate this above what is essentially just a game of American football, but with a futuristic aesthetic to it. I'd like to have seen some actual rules about robotic armor, alien species or technological abilities. But that also has to be weighed up with the fact that that would start adding more complexity and more rules to learn and slow down the game a bit. Because this is really quite fast and frenzied with a lot of dice chucking and I really do like the dice mechanic in this. It's a really good gimmick. Rolling high for movement and rolling low for tackles on a variety of colour coded dice works really well. And you can plan your tactics on the board by a simple glance at the colour of the bases. While it may not have the strategic manoeuvring of Blood Bowl over a course of two or three hours, this is going to be a fast wham bam game that you're going to have a lot of fun playing with an opponent. Well, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen here tonight on this, our 100th episode, as we pass 1,000 subscribers. Please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, and we'll see you with more vintage board games next time on Attic Raiders Retro Reviews. <laughs>